Sri Lanka's new president, Gotabaya Rajapaksa, has promised to make security his top priority. The former defense chief was sworn in as leader today after Sunday's presidential election. He's urged minorities to work with him, even though most of the support he received was from the majority Sinhalese Buddhist community. Mr. Rajapaksa is a hugely divisive figure in Sri Lanka, best known for crushing the Tamil separatist movement and ending a decades-long civil war. He won the election on a promise of overhauling national security to prevent attacks like the Easter Sunday bombings in April that killed over 250 people. Expecting about uh, to save our country, that's our country and uh, our religion and our uh, national. He has promised many uh, things in his uh, manifesto, so we hope that he can do that. So he given the you know commitment that what he can do in his five years time. So I, we hope that he will definitely do that, and we wish him you know all the very best, and we give our full support wherever areas we can do to make the country better. Data suggests the country's Tamil community voted overwhelmingly against Mr. Rajapaksa, and some accuse him of war crimes during the closing stages of the conflict. But Mr. Rajapaksa says that he will serve everyone, regardless of race or religion. Now, for more, let's uh, speak with Alan Keenan in London. He's the Sri Lanka project director at the International Crisis Group. Alan, uh, what were the or some of the key factors that helped Mr. Rajapaksa win the race? Uh, well, thanks. Nice to nice to be on. Um, I think your report covers uh, one of the big ones, which was obviously the promise of security, uh, which was uh, resonated in particular after the horrific Easter bombings, which killed more than 250 people and injured twice as many, and really devastated um, uh, Sri Lanka's Christian communities in particular. I think many of them who had traditionally been more likely to be UNP voters shifted to um, UNP, meaning the party that uh, was in power, uh, shifting instead to uh, Gotabia's SLPP party. But I think also um, uh, Gotabia was running in an environment where the government um, headed by uh, Prime Minister Rano Vikramasinghe of the UNP was deeply unpopular popular for not really addressing um, economic concerns of, of average Sri Lankans. The the uh, growth rate has dipped a lot, particularly after the Easter bombings, which really hit tourism, which a lot of people depend on for their livelihoods. But it was also a government just seen as rudderless, as, as conflicted, um, as not really getting its act together. So I think um, Gotabia was always going to be the front runner. Alan, you know Mr. Rajapaksa is known for leading the military campaign that crushed the Tamil rebels during the country's civil war. We also know that um, the Tamils and the Muslims also voted overwhelmingly against him. So what does this actually mean for the country's ethnic reconciliation? Well, it's, um, it's worrisome. Um, I, I think um, rec reconciliation between the different communities um, was always going to be a difficult uh, challenge, uh, given the bitterness from the war uh, and um, from all the violence that all communities suffer from. And the, the government of the of Prime Minister Rana Vikramasinghe, um, at one point allied with the, the former president, Sirisena, had promised many things and had promised quite an ambitious program of reconciliation, and uh, including constitutional reform and setting up a whole set of new transitional justice mechanisms, as they're called, a truth-seeking commission, and also promised accountability for the crimes that both sides committed, uh, especially towards the end of the year. Not much of that really progressed under the, under the former government, um, but it's going to be even harder, I think, for Gotabia Rajapaksa's new government, um, uh, especially if, if he ultimately gets a, um, a new parliamentary majority to, to back him up. They will be facing a, an even deeper challenge, I think, partly because of the growing polarization that this, um, that this election represents, but also because I think many people don't believe that Gotabia Rajapaksa really wants reconciliation, or if he does, it's on the basically on the terms of and in interests of the Sinhala and the Buddhist majority. Um, so he's going to have to do a lot of work, I think, to really reach out to Muslims and to Tamils and reassure them that he does have their interests at, at heart. And what does this mean then, uh, this election, this first election since the Easter Sunday terror attacks? Are you expecting him to be uh, tough on terror? Well, certainly he's campaigned with very strong language that he's going to, um, you know, eliminate 
any vestiges of terrorism that may remain. He, he's called on, he's sort of invoked the important role that he did play in the in the military victory over the Tamil Tigers, who were indeed, um, <clears throat> who did indeed uh, use terrorism as one of their main weapons uh, in their fight for a separate state. So he has a, he has a, um, a pedigree as someone who has been very tough on terrorist organizations. The question is, um, uh, there is no known um, terrorist organization in Sri Lanka right now, and um, the, all the no, all those known to be involved in the bombings in Easter uh, have been rounded up, and, or, um, or or were killed in the attacks. Um, so hopefully he will be effectively, you know, will effectively protect people, which the last government didn't do. Um, but uh, hopefully he will do and do so in a way that protects the civil liberties of, of all communities and isn't used uh, to further demonize and marginalize uh, Muslims, the vast majority of whom rejected um, these terrorist attacks, both in advance, um, but also certainly afterwards. Alan, in terms of economy, Sri Lanka had huge ties with China until the previous leader put many projects on hold. Do you expect that to be reversed again? Uh, well, I think China has actually remained to be uh, as quite an important um, as, uh, economic um, uh, sort of pillar of Sri Lanka through development assistance, uh, big infrastructure projects, and those um, have uh, continued actually even under the the government um, of the the UNP government headed by Prime Minister Vikramasinghe. It's true that that government, um, which uh, was at one point sort of linked with President Sirisena, came in on a camp on a campaign pledge to review and possibly reduce or eliminate some of those Chinese funded projects, accusing them of being uh, corrupt and uh, wasteful. Um, but in fact, once they came into office in 2015, they found that they, um, they co either couldn't get out of those contracts, those deals, because of the way they were written, or they, and they realized that there was no real alternative source of, of big money, which uh, Sri Lanka needs, given how indebted it is and how desperate it is for hard currency. So actually, China didn't. Uh, China's role was not radically reduced under the um, under the government of uh, of Ranul Vikramasinghe and President Sirisena. Um, but it is likely that it will expand now again, and certainly uh, uh, the return of the Rajapaksa family, not just Gotabia as president, but the expected re-return of Mahinda Rajapaksa as prime minister, they will certainly be more open to and more enthusiastic about Chinese um, support, I think, and could be, could be a better place to, uh, to, to win that support. All right, thanks for sharing your insights with us. Ellen Keenan, Senior Analyst and Sri Lanka Project Director from the International Crisis Group.